My name is Igor Tatsumiko, explorer, adventurer, and a guy who ends up in some interesting places. With a degree in journalism and filmmaking, I travel to the ends of the earth investigating the greatest places in the world. This is Igor Travels the World. All right, guys, so it's our first day. That right there is our trusted vehicle, which is gonna take us around on this 13-day journey. Let's begin. The weather is, uh, I hope, gonna get better. It's a little cloudy, a little windy, but anyways, it's time to go. Let's go. So after an hour of exhilarating driving, I think sometimes it felt like I was in F1 in the off-road, we have finally come up to a very cool rock formation. I'm gonna show you something really exciting. I'm not allowed to tell you where I am, but I'm gonna show you this. All right, dead animal, Mongolia. Done. So here we are at an ancient rock formation and here is an ancient carving made by people from the Bronze Age. You can see here what looks like two deer and like a brand, similar to how you would brand a horse. One more over here. Here, you can see what look like goats, because they have the horns and the body. And there's one here. I think there's one more right there. Two more here. One more there. And then there's a bigger one way up there. And that's pretty cool, because you're, you're literally looking at ancient human history from the Bronze Age. I don't know how many thousands of years ago. Welcome to my girl. Let's go check it out. Yeah. 
So this is the inside of our Gur camp. You have six beds and basically a stove and carpets, which I think are partly decorative, also partly to keep it warm. This is my cot for the night, and then we have sleeping bags because I think it's gonna get really cold at night. A little bit about the construction. Typically in a household, the male and female, the husband and wife, they'll split it into the female and male side. And so let's say on the female side, she might have the kitchen supplies and you know whatever is necessary from the female perspective. And on the male side, he may have things like the TV, his clothing, etc. And they'll actually split it in half. This is our stove, which this evening <laughs> we're gonna throw cow poop or horse poop or dried poop. And then we're gonna heat the whole of the tent. It doesn't smell so bad. And that's day one. Good night. All right, so at the end of our second day, we've arrived at our second Gur camp. Today was quite interesting. We did a lot of off-road driving, ended up seeing a bunch of camels since we're now in the southern Gobi. And uh, actually here at this Gur camp, as you just saw, there were a bunch of camels and they were cutting their fur. And then they go and they sell it at the markets. I'm pretty exhausted. Dinner is soon. I think that's it for today. <laughs> Okay, my friends, thanks for a wonderful day. It's the end of day two. Tomorrow is a new adventure. 
All right, so you may be asking yourself, what's it like to go to the bathroom when you're on this trek here in Mongolia? Well, typically, it's one of these things. Um, basically an outhouse with a hole in the ground. But this one's a little bit better. Let me show you why. So here, we actually have a toilet. Of course, then you have one more option, which is going just in the vast wilderness. But as you can see, it's pretty flat. And it's uh, sometimes a little bit harder to find a spot to hide behind. If you need to go to the bathroom, that's what you're gonna run into. So I, I didn't actually get a good night's rest because these guys wouldn't be quiet all night long. They just kept going. And then it starts, because once one starts, they all start. So I tried to talk to them, but they wouldn't listen. For example, hey, what's up guys? All night long. All night long. I hope you guys have a good day. Hope you guys are able to sleep. Mm-hmm. You didn't let the rest of us sleep. Let's go. Let's begin our day. Today we're in the Yol Valley. Yol is the name of the largest vulture that lives here and it lays its eggs way up there at 1,800 meters. actual glacier, a small one of course, and it will melt by July at some point. It's ice, it's legitimately snowing in, uh, but you can feel it starting to yeah. I hear it cracking underneath me. Okay, well I haven't fallen through yet. Okay, so far so good. This is cool, man. Here we are. Oh wow, you can really feel the cold air. It, it, there's like a 10 degree difference, wow, if not more. Hello! Wow, that is cool.
All right, guys, welcome to day four. It's about 9 a.m. We're gonna get going. Um, I just wanted to say goodbye and thank you to this wonderful Gurk camp. Um, this has been honestly one of my favorite places to stay because I feel like it's total seclusion. You just have the mountains over there. We have, I don't know, six Gurs, and um, we were the only ones here. So rock on, thank you very much. Let's go. So today has actually been a pretty difficult day for our UAS vehicle. Um, it's actually overheated a couple times, so we just stop it, take about a 10-15 minute break, let the engine cool down, and then continue our journey. So the heat today has been absolutely incredibly difficult to deal with. Um, it knocked me on my butt for about two hours. I did take a, just a nap. I just passed out. Kyle's in there sleeping still. And it's just even, you can't even walk around in a shirt even though you have to because you get sunburned. You don't want to do that. Oh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Are you okay? I'm good. Okay. So we are on our hour-long camel ride to the sand dunes but we're all really quiet they warned us not to be loud or yell because it might freak out the camels so it's actually a very silent ride which is kind of nice So the camel ride is over, thanks to my, my good camel here, he's a nice guy, and uh, my bum is sore, so I'm actually happy we're off. Let's go climb up. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.
Nomadic people have been living in Mongolia since the 3rd century BC. It is thought they were related to the Siberian people that were crossing the Bering Strait into America. So I'm at the Flaming Cliffs, named by Roy Chapman Andrews, an American archaeologist from the Natural History Museum who came here in the 1920s. And he discovered dinosaur fossils and dinosaur bones. And I have to say, on our journey so far, it's one of the most amazing places we've seen. I am absolutely in awe of the beauty that is this place. Chances are, if you are in Mongolia doing a trek, you will be traveling in this kind of vehicle. This is a Russian-made UAZ, which stands for Ulyanovsky Avtomobilny Zavod. When off-roading, the ride is extremely bumpy. The tires are deflated in order not to puncture them on sharp rocks. The car sits rather high, so you can pretty easily traverse streams and small waterways. The trunk space is quite large and can easily fit the backpacks and supplies. In terms of comfort, the inside is pretty basic. You have gauges which monitor oil, fuel, and engine temperature. Also, if you're lucky, some sort of aftermarket radio. The speedometer is oddly placed almost center console and rather low so as a driver you have to look down and to the right to see it. Not very safe to take your eyes off the road. It seats six comfortably, but you'll often get seven to eight people in a large tour group. With four of us in the back during my trek, it was very comfortable with lots of legroom, which is important on those long drives.
All right, everybody. So this has been our vehicle for the last 13 days. The vehicle has been awesome. It is built tough and our driver, Long, that's his nickname. He's been amazing. So we say goodbye to this car and it's been awesome. See ya. Day seven, finally our van broke down. But good thing that Long is an amazing driver and an amazing mechanic. I'm sure he'll have it up and running just like that. I'm trying not to spook the horses. So today has been one of our longest driving days. I think we've done easily more than 250 kilometers. But it's such a huge difference in the terrain. I mean, just yesterday we were in the middle of the Gobi Desert with uh, sand dunes and everything was dead to, look at this, uh, this giant river here and green lush land. It's awesome, the, the way the terrain changes just over the next hill, it's it's absolutely marvelous. All right, everybody, so here we have some yak yogurt, also known as tarak. So this was actually made locally by the family that lives here, so let's give it a try. Oh, oh, it is tart. It kind of, it kind of hits you, but it's good. And, uh, you can add sugar to it, but I'm not gonna. So, yeah. So today was particularly a hard day. Um, we started out with a relatively short distance to drive, but it was extremely bumpy and your insides just feel like they're clanging around. As soon as we got to the uh, Gur, the camp, the hot spring here, uh, we had lunch a little while later and I just passed out. I just couldn't take it anymore and I think I slept for more than three hours easy. I really like this place. It's calm, it's peaceful, it's countryside. You got the nice trees around, so very, very different from the previous days when we were out in the desert. Suddenly everything is green grass, water, 
Well, it's really nice out here. It's peaceful. I think I'm just gonna enjoy the silence. After another long day of driving, we finally made it to White Lake. So, 40 minutes later, dinner is served. In the year 1162, arguably the most famous person in history was born. His name, Temujin, but you might know him as Chinggis Khan. Genghis Khan had one of the largest empires ever in recorded history, conquering China, Russia, parts of Europe, and even the Middle East. According to National Geographic, after having studied the Y chromosome data of men living in the former Mongolian Empire, it was found that nearly 16 million descendants of Chinggis Khan are alive today. This is Khorkhurun, the ancient capital city of Mongolia. Chinggis Khan issued a decree that in 1220 this should be made the capital, but it wasn't realized until his son Ugade actually built here.
This is the Orkhon Gulf River. And legend has it, this is where Chinggis Khan was buried, right in this area. Now, to date, no one has ever found his tomb, and that's partly because his heir slaughtered anyone who had the unlucky chance of spotting the funeral procession. Hey guys, what's up? So we are in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. We're at a restaurant called Modern Nomads, and we were just introduced to this little fortune-telling kind of game. So you get four bones here, and what you do is you throw them on this mat, and then you match them based on what kind of animal they represent, and then you look at kind of your fortune here. So here we go. Let's throw them. Okay guys, help me out. What do I got? Camel. 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 Goat. Two goats. Two camel, goats. camel, two goats. Okay, so let's look at the chart. The chart says two camel, two goats. So we're going to look for two and two. Aha, two and two. And it means uncertain if it will be good or not. Oh. 
that's my fortune. Kind of oh. the same way. But that's kind of how I feel about a lot of things, actually. So, yes, I guess, I guess that fortune is somewhat accurate. All right, guys. So we just got a lot of food. Let me tell you what this first platter is. Obviously, we have our vegetables, but we have pork, we have beef, we have horse, and we have lamb. And actually, it's interesting. Over here, we actually have fat. And this is rare. You don't actually see a lot of food that has like fat attached. This right here is noodles and horse meat, 100% horse meat. So Dave's gonna give us his taste later. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> These are dumplings with lamb, and if I, I can just... I that's lamb fat there as well. Yeah, if I can just poke, look at this. This is lamb fat, really interesting that I have never seen like a giant chunk of fat. And then what's kind of, what kind of sauce is this? Spicy. spicy. Oh, some kind of spicy sauce. Sure. And then Carlos, what'd you get? This is chicken. Chicken with I guess a little bit of spice as well. And this is, uh, I don't remember. Pakwe. Pakwe. And my, my Russian people, you will call that grechka. Let's try whatever, I think this is actually pork. Let's try the pork with a little bit of fat. Mmm. Wow. It's really flavorful. I don't know how to describe it, but it was delicious. This, I suspect, is the horse. A, a little harder in terms of texture and a little salty, but very good. Let's try this. This is, I suspect, beef. Mm. Tender, similar to a steak. All right, so I got some horse meat and noodles, and uh, it's my first time eating horse, and I gotta say, it's really tasty. Okay, so we have stuff for lunch, and I got myself a dumpling meat soup. So it's got potatoes, cabbage, fat, uh, the dumplings itself, carrots. I'm gonna show it to you right now. Oh, and I put some chili in there. So let me show it to you. All right, everybody. So we are at a local restaurant, and we have a traditional meat pie called a hushu, which I'm probably not saying correctly. So it's meat deep fried in like a kind of bread patty. So let's get it try. Mm. It's really good. You see inside. And what Kyle told me to do is to throw a little bit of salad on top, Mexican style, <laughs> and eat it together. It was really good. We have stopped at a small local restaurant. I ordered dumpling soup with sliced beef. And uh, it's really, really, really good. The beef was boiled for a long time. It looks really, really, really soft. They also have like minced meat on the inside. And some soup actually. All right guys, it's almost the end of our journey and I have to say we've been eating so much meat and so few vegetables, so few fruit that I had to give in and get myself a can of fruit in syrup. I normally never eat this stuff, but I just miss fruit so much. We're almost gonna do a unboxing or an opening of this can of fruit by, I don't know, delicious brand. How good does this taste after almost two weeks of no fruit? It's amazing. It's so good.